What's going on you guys? It's D-Machine and this is my PvP guide for Rep Paladins in patch 5.2. Um, I told you guys I was going to come out with this a little bit sooner than I did and the reason why is because I wanted to make sure the information that I have to give is good. I wanted to make sure everything that I was giving you guys would be beneficial. So here it is. Let's jump right into it. So this guide is going to be separated in four different sections. The first section being gearing. Anything to do with gems and chants and gear in general will be found in the first section. The second section is glyphs and talents. I'm going to go over the changes in the glyphs and the talents. I'm going to go over what glyphs you should be using against certain compositions in arena. Things like that. In the third section I'm going to talk about key bindings and macros. And then in the fourth and the last section I'm going to talk about some add-ons. So let's jump right into it. Alright guys, before you go and you gem or enchant or forge any of your gear, you're going to want to know which gear to buy. The off pieces that you're going to want to purchase are called al Alacrity, um, Malevolent Gladiators Alacrity. So what Alacrity gives is no hit rating, it gives just good stats that has no hit rating. And the reason why you don't want any hit rating is because the amount of passive hit rating that's put on your gear is going to be enough to get you capped. Uh, same thing from your enchants. You're going to get passive hit elsewhere. So you're going to want to utilize other stats. And alacrity is the off pieces that do that. Now, there isn't an alacrity belt, so you're going to want to purchase the belt that has mastery versus the hit rating. Um, and then you can go ahead and you can start gemming your gear. So for the meta gem, you're going to want 216 strength and 3% increased critical strike effect. Definitely, definitely the best meta. For your red gems, you're going to want 80 strength and 160 PvP resilience. The reason why you're going to want that gem is because PvP resilience is number one. We always want the socket bonuses, but PvP resilience is priority. And the reason why is even though that they buffed pvp power to make it so it helps us off heal it still doesn't prioritize over resilience if anything resilience is a bigger priority now because the amount of utility that was given to us makes it so we're even bigger targets to kill because we don't off heal ourselves as good as we off heal others so resilience is just as important now as it was before looking at uh the yellow sockets you're obviously going to want straight resilience and looking at uh, the free sockets that blacksmithing or something like it would give, you want straight resilience because that's priority. Into the green sockets, you're going to want PvP power and PvP resilience. And that's it, guys. That's it for gemming. Now for enchanting, you're going to want um, the strength and crit, uh, epic enchant for your shoulders and for your legs. For your cape, you're going to want the hit rating enchant. For your chest, you're going to want the resilience enchant. For your bracers, you're going to want the strength enchant. Gloves, also strength. For the belt buckle, you're going to want, obviously, the belt buckle, but the 320 PvP resilience. Um, yep, we already talked about the strength and crit for your legs. And then for your boots, Pandaren Step. And as for your weapon, the weapon chain. Weapon chain is priority, it also helps you get expertise capped, which is a priority in gearing your paladin. So, on to reforging. Now, you need to make sure that you're going to be hit capped and expertise capped um, for, uh, before reforging. So, uh, my hit chance is 3.18, and that, that gives me a zero chance to miss at level 90. And my expertise is way over capped, but it's okay. And that gives me a zero chance to miss at level or to dodge at level 90. I actually could probably use a little bit more expertise to get rid of the parry chance, but that's not very important. So, looking at reforging, priorities have changed. So, the priorities of our stats right now are PvP resilience, then PvP power, then strength, then haste, then mastery, then crit. So, when you're reforging, you're obviously going to be reforging to haste wherever you can. And after haste, if haste is already on the item, you're going to want to reforge the mastery. And if there's haste and mastery on the item, don't reforge it at all. Unless you need hit rating or expertise rating. And uh, that's it, guys. That's it for gearing. 
Welcome to the second section of the guide, Talents and Glyphs. Now, in the Talents and the Glyphs, uh, Talents in particular, things haven't really changed all that much. I mean, the first tier is going to be Long Arm and the Law, obviously. Uh, nothing has changed in that tier since 5.1. Fist of Justice still is going to be priority in arenas. Burning the Guilt, maybe for RBGs. Selfless Healer has been nerfed, but it's still the best ability because of the Flash of Light buff. Selfless Healer is an amazing ability and really makes you viable in 3v3. Um, if you are currently using Eternal Flame or Sacred Shield and you don't want to try Selfless Healer because you saw the nerf, give Selfless Healer a shot. Uh, as for the third tier, Hand of Purity has been buffed, but to be on quite honest with you guys, because of the two Hand of Sacrifices that do dispel your teammates, Clemency is the best. There could be an occasional situation where Hand of Purity can uh, be of use, say against like a, a UA Warlock team where if you Hand of Sacrifice someone, you'll get silenced and hit pretty hard by dispelling UA Warlock, uh, by dispelling Unstable Affliction. So uh, going Hand of Purity might be beneficial against a team like that. As for the third tier, um, I'm still not happy with Sanctified Wrath or Divine Purpose. I like the control burst of Holy Avenger. I like that. And not only that, but it syncs up with your wings now, so you can almost make a Swifty macro if you wanted. Um, but uh, Holy Avenger is definitely the way to go when it comes to off-healing and trying to fulfill that utility spot on your arena team. For the third, Holy Prism is still number one for me. I can't tell you guys how many times I've gotten stealthies out with Holy Prism. It's not RNG because you don't you don't know when it's going to hit if you're using Execution Sentence. If you're using Holy Prism, it's a controlled burst. I'm all about control, guys. Alright guys, moving on to Glyphs. Now the three Glyphs that I use passively are Glyph of Board of Glory, Glyph of Flash of Light, and Glyph of Templar's Verdict. Templar's Verdict never really changes. That one's just very good. Uh, Glyssa, Glyph of Word of Glory is uh, very good uh, because every single time you use an off heal with Holy Power with your Word of Glory, it increases your damage by 3% for each Holy Power for 6 seconds. Now, I off heal a lot, guys, and because we're stacking haste, we can get those off heals out quickly, and so it's up quite often, and 9% damage increase is a lot more than it sounds. Now with Flash of Light, what I like to do is I like to have like a couple Holy Power, maybe even three. Uh, I'll Flash of Light my partner with a Selfless Healer proc for, for an instant class. And then right after that, I'll Word of Glory and it will heal for 10% more. Um, I've tried it recently in 5.1 and it worked great then. And now that our heals are even better now, uh, it heals even better. 10% is quite a bit. So those are my pa passive glyphs. Now say I'm fighting a team with a Shadow Priest. I'm going to want to be able to turn evil or to instantly fear the siphing that comes out so it doesn't control my team. So I'll use turn evil and I'll replace word of glory with turn evil. All right. And let's see if I'm facing, say, a team like KFC or another cleave, I'll use divine protection in place of word of glory to reduce as much melee damage as I possibly can. Um, I mean, other than that, guys, I really don't change my glyphs up too, too often. Sometimes I see that I need to go turn evil um, with, like, a disc priest. And then it's like a rep paladin warrior, so I have to go uh, divine protection. In which case, I get rid of my flash of light glyph for turn evil and my word of glory glyph for divine protection. But other than that, if there's no priest on the team or even a DK where you can fear the gargoyle, you can fear the DK during Lichborn, things like that. Um, you could go turn evil. Turn evil doesn't just fear Siphine. It also feel, fears uh, Shadow Fiend. It fear, fears DK's pets, Warlock's pets. It's a very, very useful ability. All right, you guys, welcome to the third section of the guide where I talk about key bindings and macros. Macros are so important because it helps us off heal and save and help our partners with the rest of our abilities without getting off of our main target, our kill target. Um, the way that it helps us is it makes it so we can use abilities on our partners without even targeting them. Um, a very simple um, macro for that would be, for instance, this flash of light macro where it's uh, slash cast, 
target equals I'm an emu flash of light. What this does is it makes it so I don't have to target I'm an emu to cast flash of light on him. I just have to use this macro. Now you can make a modifier macro, which looks similar to this, where it the modifiers like control and the modifiers like shift and alt uh, will determine where that cast goes. So say I drag and drop this particular macro to key binding S. If I were to hold Control S, it would then target I'm an Emu. If I were to hit Shift S, it would hit it would cast it on Bubba, and Alt for I'm an Emu again. But that's just because I have them twice in my macro. But uh, so you could do a modifier macro like that, or you can keep it simple. You can just take this Flash of Light macro and put it on three separate key bindings on your toolbar. So you could literally just key bind them to their own specific key bindings. It could either be a shift macro like that. You don't have to make a modifier macro to use shift, alt, or control. You can just literally make a key binding, control S or shift S, and you can make it simple like that. But I wanted to tidy up my bar, so that's why I have control macros. Things like this are very important to like off heal and to help your team as fast as you possibly can. It's going to be hard to get used to new macros and to new key bindings and stuff like that. But once you get used to key or macros like this, it will severely or dramatically, I should say, improve your gameplay in Arena. The biggest one that you guys have to get used to now is Hand of Sacrifice. With this new um the spell that Hand of Sacrifice has, it is such an important ability to get your healer out of like CC and things like that, or maybe even giving a DPS out of CC so you can land a kill. Um, it can be utilized in so many different ways, and it's definitely going to be a game changer for us Rep Paladins, but um, you have to be able to, to use it quickly to utilize it to its full potential. Um, but uh, just as important is Flash of Light. With the Selfless Healer procs, you need to be able to Flash of Light your partners quickly. So, um, you can either use Modifier Macros, and I have a Razor Naga guide to where I use my Modifier Macros for my Razor Naga because your fastest reactions are going to come from your main hand. Mine being my right hand using my mouse, my fastest reactions are going to be on my Razor Naga. So I go into a guide about how I use my modifier macros with my Razor Naga. If you want to check that out, I'll leave a clickable box in the video right now. Go check out that guide if you're interested in Razor Naga stuff. But uh, that's it for the key bindings and macro section of my guide. In this section of my guide, guys, I'm going to talk about add-ons. Uh, the first add-on is CLC Ret. It's mainly a PVE uh, add-on that allows you to see like what's the best spell in your rotation for the max amount of damage. Uh, the priorities can be changed, which, hel which helps me remind me whenever Judgment's up. Because I need to know when Judgment's up to use it as often as I possibly can to get those selfless healer procs. It's very important. To make it so Judgment is your number one priority, you go into your add-on interface and you go to CLC Rep. You load the options and you go to Rotation. Now each ability has its own like uh, acronym and J is Judgment. So I put J at the front of my priority list. J is the number one priority and I hit OK. The next add-on I use is called Click. What I use this for is it helps me keybind any button for like mouse over or anything. I use it for my middle uh, mouse wheel to also cleanse, say like poisons or things like that off of my teammates because wound poison does reduce healing by 20% and that's a big thing to cleanse. If you can get the cleanses off on wound poison and the rogue forgets to reapply it or with shiv or whatever, it's a pretty awesome add-on to have. Custom Combat Text. This is the add-on that I use that everyone asks about. Why does your combat text look so flippin' cool? Well, this is the add-on I use. And then I use the text, Destroy. Air Filter. I am a button masher. I completely destroy my keyboard every day, but it's super resilient. I have a no-po chalk. Um, it's a sweet mechanical keyboard with the buttons that can be uh, taken off and replaced by even like harder or softer buttons. It's a great keyboard. It takes a lot of uh, a lot of beating, so much beating that I need an add-on to get rid of my error filters or to get rid of my errors at the top of my screen because there's so many and it annoys the butt out of me. All right, 
a vent alert. Now this add-on, what I use this for is I make it so it shows me when I have selfless healer procs ready, uh, how many stacks, and how many um, holy power I have and how many stacks of holy power. Really useful add-on. Another add-on I use that's kind of a must-have is called Gladius. Um, it shows like an interface of your enemy team, what they're casting, what trinket they use, if they cleansed, uh, what cooldowns they're used. It shows a little icon over their class icon. Great add-on. Definitely recommend it for anyone who's in the PvP scene, especially in arenas anyway. Plate buffs. This shows abilities in like CCs and big abilities or cooldowns above uh, people's heads, like above their uh, their health bar. Say a warrior just behind you pop recklessness, a big recklessness icon pops up behind them and you know they're popping recklessness. Say your warrior just feared and you don't want to blind over their fear. You see the icon of the warrior fear pop up above their heads as they're running away so you don't blind on accident. Very useful add-on. Another add-on I use is called Safe Q. So many times now have I like left the queue or accidentally left the queue a few times at like 2400 MMR and it's just bad news. Safe Q stops all that from happening. And the last add-on that I recommend to new PvPers is called Gladiator LOSSA. This add-on gets so much hate, but the reason why I recommend it is because it is great for new players to start understanding the abilities of their enemies for instance in arena it notifies you what's happening what cooldowns are being used and things like that um and if oh, what big heals are being casted and stuff like that without actually seeing it it says it. It, it like the audio literally plays and tells you what's happening and i don't recommend using it long term because it will make you get used to it and you will then like rely on it and i don't think that's good i think that you need to be able to see things for yourself it's more reliable and but uh if you rely on gladiator los sa i think it's going to be negative considering it will affect communication and things like that but starting out and learning abilities i definitely would recommend that add-on but now i don't personally use it anymore and those are all my add-ons. All right, you guys, that's my whole guide. I'm not gonna go over like particular situations in arena against certain comps, playing certain comps, things like that. There's just way too many variables to take into consideration, but I will make a Rep Paladin tips and tricks guide um, maybe later on in the season. And I will see you later, D-Machine out. Also, guys, don't forget to follow my stream, twitch.tv slash dmachine52. I go live every single day, guys, and I do also talk to the people in the stream either, either through my chat or through Raid Call, where you can come into Raid Call and you can actually talk to me like we're in a Skype call together. I will see you then. Dmachine out.